Ladies and gentlemen, I have for you a lovely game of CMBW today. This was apparently played around Fraudarchy. We have uh, three Ewer of Worlds, who I assume to be Kian, and we have Mesk. And it's as a Zerg versus Zerg on Desert Duality, a map by <laughs> a map by Biddy B, who was uh, in the chat earlier. What's up, dude? So. As we uh, get stuck into this one, we get to enjoy the fact that we got APM. We got camera positions, except we don't have camera positions for Mesk. I don't know why that happens sometimes. It feels like like the first player doesn't actually get logged or something. But only occasionally. Only occasionally. Or maybe all the time. Maybe it's just a global bug. Either way, now that I've pointed it out, I'm sure Veek will fix it. Because he watches these castovers. And he fixels every bug I point out. Which is why I'm going to now point out that the ice script limitation is still there. So I can't add a fourth race. Uh, or heroes, as Mesk is pointing out. So, like, yeah, now he'll fix that, too. Obviously, that's the uh, that's the bit there. The Biddy B, as it were. So, actually, it looks like this map got lower econ than the last time I saw. I feel like there were way more mineral fields when I played or when I casted a few games on it. But maybe I'm mistaken. Either way, it's going to be a slower early game, then, uh, as a scale-up occurs. Now, the first tech structure is out for both players, their choices being made. No scouting just yet, although I think Mesk is going to rectify that situation. He has gone Quasrock opener, and Kian, meanwhile, has gone Hydrock. Now, I've been told Hydrock is too weak, or Hydrock is weaker, or whatever. I think maybe uh, Quasrock opener in ZBZ is probably still king, but on maps that are, you know, wide enough distance, like what we're seeing here, and generally uh, maps that are... You know, they give you a little bit more time to do things. I feel like that's a you know a fairly reasonable situation. You can kind of go either way. Uh, it also depends on the starting resource layout and all this other stuff, right? So we'll see how aggressive Mesk wants to get. He has, has gone for a Larvosk opener. It looks like Kian's maybe a few steps behind in that respect. He is now confirming. He's like scouting around and stuff. But he also planned to take this Hatcherosk uh, up here in the top. And now Mesk is denying gas. I, I don't think Kian knows. He hasn't noticed. So... It, it, it kind of interrupts the flow of the gas income very, very slowly, very, very slightly. But uh, the <laughs> it's not like it's going to get really make a huge difference. So he didn't even get to a chance to see the salt, you know, to, to make it work. So very unfortunate there. Now, it looks like Mesk will go ahead and go for some Zether cores and an expansion of his own. This is an interesting position. If Mesk was paying attention to the minimap, I don't even need to entertain that thought. But I just pointed out the fact that obviously he saw the Droleth work, you know, move over there. I don't think he actually saw it but that is what it is and now he's uh, actually borrowing it because he wanted to uh, he's, he's kind of made his uh, build order a little bit awkward and he's gonna go ahead and send the, yeah just let it return honestly that's funny uh, and yeah now he's going for the expansion so a a spraith colony kind of out in the middle of nowhere i think there was an expectation of a nath rush because of all the gas being mined that was something i wanted to point out a little bit earlier but didn't end up happening so and then we, we were able to look at some other things instead and uh, yeah, at this point, it's just a matter of who is able to, you know, macro up first. We actually have 12 workers only, by the way, for uh, Kian, saving up that money for the Hydras. He could actually do something pretty spooky with this. And it looks like maybe actually Mesk did notice the uh, worker pathing, or he's just sort of... <laughs> Amazing. Uh, he, he might just be, you know, like, you know, trying to take a flanking position or something to that effect. But the Hydras are already a bit, uh, you know, on their way moving out. So, at this point, he can just send the, the units over. It looks like the worker did die. Uh, but at this point, I don't actually think the Zeths will kill this Hatcherosk in time. So, he should have plenty of time. There is another Vorvacore coming out. I remember that those do indeed regress. In fact, there's a little bit of awkward micro over here. He definitely could have uh, just taken that fight, I think. Uh, and yeah, there you go. Plenty of time. Did kill the one worker, obviously slowed things down, made things a little bit less comfor comfortable. Losing the Vorvacore afterwards is definitely a bit awkward. Um, and then, yeah, now at this point he realizes, okay, I, I should start getting some defense. So transferring some workers up to the top, that's not a bad idea. And, uh, yeah, Kian's actually not, even though he sends this message, he's actually not attacking. Uh, definitely doesn't feel very, uh, safe and secure at this point. And this base is also pretty far away for a drone transfer, a drone transfer. So he's going to have a hard time doing that. I think on top of that, the fact that, you know, Mask has a more conventional base and is already starting to saturate, transferred some workers already. Uh, he's actually in a pretty solid position economically. We'll see how he spends the money because, of course, even though these units are more expensive and there's less of them than what you can get with, like, Zethrocores, uh, you definitely can get it into a situation where you 
have more quality of your army, right? Like we we think about this more in other RTS games that are just worse, by the way, than CMBW, like StarCraft II and even StarCraft Brood War, wink, 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 uh, that the uh, army quality matters a lot, right? In StarCraft II specifically, if you were to have like 200 supply worth of, you know, ghost tank as Terran, that's a very different situation than if you have a 200 supply of Marines, right? So, that's going to be sort of what I would describe here. Now, actually, Kian will catch some of these units and realize, oh, they're on a trajectory to my base. Uh, there is only one circuit, and he hasn't been quick enough to pull the workers or respond with the Hydras. So I think maybe he's actually just going to seed ground here. Uh, the workers will be able to pick off maybe one or two other uh, uh, Zetra cores, but otherwise, yeah, it's just going to get melted. Now, however, this number of Hydras is more than capable of killing the main. So this is actually an interesting situation where... Okay, one player gives up the uh, one player gives up the nat. You know, the other player is basically going to have to seed ground over here now because uh, there's just not enough units here. So he has to pull back. He has to come all the way back, or he has to go for the the kill himself. But there are some Izira cores being mutated over here, so that is going to pretty much end things because at this point, oh, he's even sniping the eggs. Absolutely brutal. Has enough money to uh, rebuild the. A Hatcherosk here with a, a quick move. And yeah, he's just going to go ahead and send the uh, uh, Izzy's over. And they'll go ahead and mop the floor with that. Uh, and yeah, at this point, what, what can you realistically do? Okay, I, I don't remember. We, we patched out the uh, progress bar here for, based on my config. So I have no idea how long this game goes on for. But it, it looks like Ian must take this game very shortly. And we'll have a very short cast over as a result. So uh, this is just going to be the Fraudarchy catch-up uh, cast over, apparently. Because... Well, <laughs> I don't know, man. So let's see. Let's see how long this is. Depending on if if we can scratch like twenty minutes, then maybe we'll get there. But it's it's already seemingly over in like seven. Now that being said, I mean he's bought enough time by sacrificing the rest of his base. So okay, here we go. Now this is pretty good because the you know the timing is such that he can actually catch a lot of these hydras now. <laughs> <laughs> but two skits show up, so I'm not sure if it's possible. He's actually pulling workers for some reason. I don't know what's going on there. Um, d delaying in time for a sp uh, Spraith to come up is fine, I think. Like, it's still quite possible. That's so funny that they came up at, the, at exactly that time, and now Hydra obviously burrowed over here. Still not uh, retaking that base just yet. The drone count is way higher for Mesk. He's got 31 workers stacked up on this one base, and uh, Kian only has eight, so... This is actually quite difficult. I mean, he doesn't know it yet, but he could just, like, path down here and start killing the, the workers. Obviously, he'd have to be worried a little bit about some of the melee units here. But I actually don't think that's too bad because, obviously, you can use the skits to help with that. And then, you know, you kind of just do your thing. Uh, looks like he might be massing up for an attempt at an attack. He's uh, thinking about what to do with these larvae, which is uh, pretty funny. I still think he, he might think that the game is, like, over and he's just waiting to win. I wouldn't be so sure, bro. You got eight workers. <laughs> so, so you know, got to be careful. He's actually you know, spending some money on, on static defense, it looks like. And uh, the fight continues. A Lakizla's already out, though. Three Izzy's going down. And, yeah, at this point, we even have a Gorgokor out. And only killing the top the top half of a Kagrit. You know what I mean? He's just going to go ahead and get redone. Good good chip damage on the Gorgokor, though. Almost half HP. It's going to take a little bit of time to heal. Meanwhile, another base being taken, but still no workers harvesting it. So that's definitely going to be awkward. And this Hydra, I, this, so these aren't in range of each other, but the Hydra can definitely see the Lakizalisk. I'm not, it doesn't look like Kia noticed it based on the fact that is, you know, just looking at his camera positioning. Thankfully, we can see his camera positioning, unlike Mesk's. But, uh, you know, no worries. It's still half of the formula. And he's just scouting around for a hidden base. He, he's His instincts are correct. He is playing against Iskatu Mesk. Iskatu Mesk known for taking hidden bases and doing other very silly things, as we are all uh, quite uh, well known of. At this point, we, we kind of recognize it. We kind of realize what's happening. Uh, now, this is kind of an interesting one, but the Lakizalisk, obviously, every unit receives, like, half vision range while burrowed. So the Lakizalisk is... Uh, you know, uniquely affected by this. So you kind of need to spot for it. Oh, you could do that with just a couple of Zethra cores that are borrowed or something, but of course that would involve building a Quaz Rock. <laughs> uh, I, he, he doesn't know it, Kian, but it would be really funny if he sniped the, you know, Vorver core or whatever, because that's a precious resource that Mess cannot reproduce at this point. So that's kind of funny. And at this point also his uh, worker will be displaced uh, by the Hydralisk, or the Hatcheros. So his uh, Hydralisk will be displaced, is what I meant to say. Now, he has discovered this base. He will know, based on fog, 
that this base is up, although he won't know that that worker is burrowed, of course. And if Overcore just scouting around, it will find the uh, Hatterosk down here, which may be a target for the uh, Gorgs. Uh, who are, where are the Gorgs? Where did they go? Did they die? No, they, okay, they went to go kill that Hydra. But, so he's gonna see this base then, even though it's only two Hydras and a skip, slowly chipping it down. He might be able to get there in time. Yeah, I think he will actually be able to get there. It'll just barely survive. Maybe if Kian dances around uh, in the meantime. He, he was just over here, and then now he's already getting owned, so. Okay, he sent up some more. He could definitely just finish off the Hatch Ross, but he actually wants to fight the Gorgs, which is maybe a little bit ambitious with this number of units. Oh, this is such a critical failure. He could so easily have killed the, the Hatcherosk. He could so easily have killed the Hatcherosk. That is, that's gonna hurt. That's gonna sting. So I think maybe hopefully Kian recognizes he's actually in a real game. It's not over. I mean, it's a silly game, but he is in a real game. And at this point, you know, there, we've got some some more units coming up from Mask. He's only got Z uh, Zorka's units right now, but he has so many workers and much better income than Kian, especially now that this transfer is in, he's going to start getting his main back online. What a silly game. Okay, we're not out of the woods just yet, boys. I thought this game was so over, but I, I mean, why would I be casting it if it wasn't just so silly? Now, all the Hydras just left here, so this Zorius gorgor combo is going to cause some uh, tism. And there's just no static defense here, right? So he should evacuate the workers and put them into his main. It's not like his main is saturated anyway. And uh, yeah, at this point, we'll be able to uh, kill one of the Gorgs and uh, probably finish this base off if he's uh, being, you know, paying attention. Uh, at this point, he could just kill the, the circuits, to be fair. Uh, he's not really being very uh, attentive. There you go. He's able to pull that one back. And it was not tasked onto his... Uh, back to the other unit. Now he should focus that one down. He's actually just seeding this ground. He's borrowed the units and uh, Meskas and microing them. So that's fine. And yeah, so, so this base will actually go down. He's correcting his error there. An expensive loss of all the Hydras, uh, but he will indeed finish that one off. However, at this point, Meska is still on more bases, right? He shut down the mining on the, the limited mining on that base. He's got more than double the worker count at this point. Now we have to say this is Mesk favored. I know that's insane to say after how they get this game open, but I, Kian just let his guard down. I mean, you can't let Me your guard down versus Mesk. Mesk is a, a wily foe. He, uh, even though you could like, he's set his base up in such a stupid way. You could like walk back here and kill his workers. I guess now this uh, circuit kind of makes that harder. Uh, you could obviously just snipe this Zorkis with Hydras. Like there's so many things you could do to abuse this position. But unfortunately, I don't think Kian is in a good spot to do that. He's lost, obviously he never rebuilt this Hatcherosk. He just lost this Hatcherosk. So uh, he does have money, he can rebuild it. It's just going to take a while. And that is time that gives Mesk more tempo, more ability to get back into the game. Now, the, the one saving grace here for Kian is that Mesk has the most expensive tech structure with the most expensive units. So that, that all of that power is essentially concentrated. And what that will mean is as long as he can hold on versus him and, and use defender's advantage and not get stuck on his own ramp, somehow not losing a single Hydra, surely this one dies. How the fuck did all of them live? What the hell? What was that? Mean? What was that unit control? I, I am seeing shocking things, honestly. Burrowing the wounded ones, that's fine. You kind of don't really have this ability to, to do this, but that's all right. He can just walk right up and kill this Lakizalus. That's definitely a mistake by Mess to leave that there. But I think, you know, as soon as he hit the burrow key, he realized he was kind of in an awkward spot. So that's exactly what I was talking about. All of this power is concentrated. And if it's not used well, micro speaking, then you are going to be in a situation where you will not really be able to finish the game in the state that Mesk is currently in. Now, at that same, in that same breath, we have lots of minerals being floated for Mesk. Very little gas, obviously, as uh, is customary. And only one worker on the gas here for Kian, even though it is capped. Uh, so he should definitely put another worker on there to, to fully saturate it. But like at this point, he needs more workers. He needs more bases. He And he should definitely be able to do that thanks to his, um, you know, Ability to hold on, right? He has an Avaleth for detection, just to, you know, guard himself against any burrow traps. He still hasn't evacuated these workers and put them over here, so this 18 is actually a 15. It's even worse than it looks, and it already looked pretty bad. Quasrock Pool finally being remade with all that excess money and taking two bases. So Mesk is definitely in the driver's seat. We do have a big flash in the middle. Uh, a lot of Gorgor cores being uh, stacked up here, and I think that should actually put him in a state where he can win. It, it, the Avaleth obviously is just sort of insult to injury. It doesn't need to die there. He just didn't move it. So that's pretty awkward. But he's now getting some skits, looking for the mobility, it looks like. Uh, try to avoid the Zorius and the Lakizalus. So only Gorgs would be able to respond. Uh, of course, 
You never know. You never know what's really going to happen. He's trying to do, do a little dance. I can't believe Kian's got to this situation of the game where he's now so heavily down. He's he's going to be one base versus four. He's already down by more than half of the worker count. He hasn't restocked any of his bases. Did he fall asleep? Did he, uh, did he go night-night? Oh, here we go. So th th the problem is, the biggest issue that Kian probably didn't recognize is the... Worker count never got hit. He never hit the workers. He killed the main, but he didn't kill the workers. And at this point, Kian's main has not been saturated. I mean, we think about it, it's like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18. So 18 workers would be full saturation, but three of them are down over here. Like, so he's not fully saturated at his main. He has to saturate his gas at least. So this whole time, he's like working on, on low sat. And he had really good, you know, proactive play, moving around here, making sure to scout all of this stuff, get everything. But it's just a fundamental misunderstanding, I think, of, like, the worker economy, right? The fact that Mesk had 30-something workers over in this one base meant that even though he was on one base, he was still mining more than Kian. Kian had eight or nine workers at the time. Like, crazy disparity there. And I still favored Kian because I thought, oh, he can just win. But he didn't pull the trigger fast enough. He kind of, like, got stuck, you know, killing off, you know, important stuff like, you know, Kagrin colonies can morph into static defense or Larvosk, so you want to kill them, but, you know, he's kind of lackadaisical with it. You know, he definitely could have been a little bit more heavily uh, favored in that sense. He does have a fleet of skiffs. Unfortunately for him, there's a fleet of gorgs, so I don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. We might not actually get to tier two or anything in this game, but to be honest, I'm really surprised that this game even existed. What is going on here? <laughs> that's like the opposite play that you would want to make normally. <laughs> so trying to do his best to, uh, Desync the Gorgor Core uh, sort of cloud and see. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of like pick them off with targeted fire. It's really dangerous, though. As you can see, all of his units are starting to get really bruised. So there you go. Another one goes down. But this is still kind of like a favorable trade for Kian. It's just he needs to trade so much more cost efficiently than this and also get his economy back online, right? And his, you know, all of his focus, all of his APM being, you know, set and dedicated to that one thing. Only have a couple of workers at each one of these bases, but it's the scaling factor that matters, and Mesk will definitely scale way, way, way faster. He can still do something over here. Like this is still potentially good. Uh, he could have like turned on that one weak Gorgokor. There's only a few of them here. Like he's actually doing an okay job with a, a, not a favorable situation, right? Ah, but he he overestimated the drag factor. I think that Gorgokor just got attacked by its own friends. So there you go, keeping the wounded one back kind of makes sense. At this point, I don't really know how healthy the Skith pack is, but he can keep adding more. He can try his best to, uh, you know, cl clean up shop. He's already bruising some of the Vorvs. The Vorvs are obviously not going to do much damage here. They're mostly just to distract things, maybe get the Skiths frozen, uh, but he can just continuously focus that one down. These two should be should definitely be microed out. Gor in fact, Mess doesn't really know what to do in that situation. He's like, what the fuck? They're not moving. What, what's happening here? Uh, and can definitely finish off that one last Gorgacore. So the army swinging back in favor of Kian. Uh, there's an outside chance he can survive long enough to, you know, come back into the game. Uh, but there's definitely still more room for him to... What? What's going on here? What is he doing? Did he... Did he pull something incorrectly? Maybe we're desynced, actually. That kind of looks like units came in here to fight and worked a bit differently. Yeah, this looks like units came in here to fight, and, and I don't actually know what's happening. I think he lost all of his workers. Fat. And, uh, yeah, okay, that was the end of the game. Well, okay, it looked like everything up until the point where it was Skith versus Gorgokor was correct. This is on, like, a weird version of Fraudarchy, because I sent so many versions up. I actually don't know which version this was played at exactly, and it wasn't submitted with, like, a, a version code or anything. So I kind of just guesstimated. But it looks like, actually, pretty much everything besides the, those final stages of the Skith v. Gorgokor was, uh, was correct. There's definitely some weirdness going on there. Uh, and it looks like maybe what happened there was maybe, like, the there were more Zorius and more Vorvs or something, and they were able to chip through the base and, like, force him to pull workers and stuff. So, okay, that was definitely a really silly game. Uh, that was definitely not what I was expecting to see. But, uh, you know what? At least it was a game. <laughs> I can't believe this is the kind of game that Mesk wins. 
but it's it, it's exactly fitting, you know, trying to take the hidden bases, force the enemy to scout, somehow come back from an impossible situation because they let their guard down. Now Kian knows that the next time he's in this situation, definitely don't skimp on the workers. But you know what? An entertaining ZVZ nonetheless. So there's the uh, game at the end. There's We get to see the scoreboard with the inaccurate colors. Another thing that uh, somebody watching this can fix in the future because I think this is DF's territory. But anyway... Catch you guys later for another cast over. You know where to look. You know where to go. And if you're trying to submit replays, I saw some games from Lundier versus The Shambler coming up. I got some games from Fraudarchy that I still have to do. Like there's an FFA apparently that might be worth casting and stuff like that. So definitely check out some more content coming your way shortly. And until then, peace.